everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name's Rebecca, for those of you who don't know me. I buy and sell vintage pre-loved bits and pieces. Anything that looks a little bit interesting, a little bit weird is my favourite. And I like to sell on Etsy and eBay and recently Vintiuria. So today I'm just going to go through some things that I've bought this week, some things that I've sold that you might recognise from the last haul that I showed you, um, some little things that I've learnt this week, some things that I've been watching this week. I want to go through the comments on the last video and then at the end just finish off with maybe my thought of the week and get your opinion on that in the comments and we'll discuss that next time. So in the last haul that I showed you, it'd be a couple of videos ago now, you might remember I picked up a Studio Pottery Vase. I'll see if I can pop the picture up here for you. Um, and I it had a maker's mark, but I couldn't make it out. Um, now, Stephen is from Stall69, and he sent me a lovely comment, and um, I think it was a message actually. It was a message on Etsy, I believe just given me um, a link to a group on Facebook and said, try this Facebook group. It's called British Studio Pottery Mystery Pots. Um, so I just popped a photograph on that group, um, just of the vase itself, the base and a close up of the mark. And literally within 10 minutes, somebody messaged me with the maker. So this is a fantastic group if anyone has. They do like it to be British Studio Pottery. So if you've kind of got an inkling that it is that, you can just post on there and the people are really knowledgeable and really helpful. It turned out to be made by a lady called Mary McGregor and she works at Roxborough Pottery and it's sort of a 1970s sort of era. So that's helped me with my listing. Now, there's not really been very many of her things that have sold. Um, so I've just sort of had to have a guess at the price. I put it on for £50. I haven't really had many views. I'm sort of looking for a very specific buyer, I suppose, who knows that maker and wants that maker or wants something from Roxburgh Studio Pottery. Um, so I'll just keep that on for a while. I'll maybe keep lowering the price and hoping for the right buyer on that one. But that is a really, really helpful resource, that Facebook group. Um, so check that out if you have anything that you're not quite sure of. So there's been a couple of bits that have sold from that haul, which is great. Um, I sold the lovely green and clear glass um, barley twist stem glasses. I got £12 for the pair of those, so not huge money, but they went within a couple of weeks, so that was fantastic. I sold the little carriage clock for £8, which was around the sort of price it, it tends to, tended to sell for around £5 to £10. So I got £8 plus postage, so I was happy to get that one gone as well. I also sold for £23 that last lot of the jewellery that I was selling off. Um, I put that on just as a buy it now with best offer. Um, I sold that for £23. So in hindsight, it probably would have been better for me to just list those jewellery pieces as buy it now with best offer bundles. I think I would have got a bit more, but I thought I would just try with the auction. And now I've got all of that gone. So I feel like I've got a lot more of a clear head now on the costume jewellery that I want to buy, um, if any. To be honest, I've kind of sickened myself off with it now. Um, and if I'm not really enjoying selling stuff, it'll just sit there forever and it'll never get listed. I've got a few jewellery pieces there now in a drawer that I just haven't put on yet. I've also been doing really well with Bibles. Um, I got a lovely stack of Bibles. I still haven't listed most of them from a charity shop. Um, I paid 50 pence to a pound for them. Um, I've sold one sort of a Masonic type Bible. It had like an inscription and a sticker from a Masonic Society that has sold for 39 99 plus postage on eBay. So that was absolutely fantastic. I just shipped that one out yesterday. Sold a lovely wooden handled magnifying glass for £19.99. That was really unusual. I think I paid about 20 pence from that in one of those rummagey boxes at the car boot sale. A light fitting I've sold for £60, which is absolutely amazing. It's not something I normally pick up, um, but I thought I would give it a go. It was just a single, it was one of those two armed sort of wall fixtures. So £60 for that is absolutely unbelievable. I was so pleased with that. Right, so let's have a look at some of the things that I have picked up this week. We have this lovely uh, cloisonné style 
mug tree, mug stand. You could also use it for jewellery, I suppose. And I've seen someone advertise it as for bobbins, for like your threads. There's only one really listed in America for $65. That is currently for sale. I can find one that has sold on bids on auction on eBay and that went for £20 and had a couple of bidders. So I think I'm going to maybe aim a little bit higher because I can't really find very many on eBay. I think I'm going to go, I'll try at 40 I can lower the price. If somebody's been willing to spend 20 I'm hoping that I can get at least that, but I'm going to try a little bit higher. This absolutely gorgeous red and white glass vase, it's heavy. I weighed it, it's 1.6 kilograms. It is sturdy. It's actually when I Google image searched it, it actually came up with Amazon, which is weird, but that gave me a maker. Walther, Walther glass. It's the satin ruby glass flower vase made in Germany. Unfortunately, not worth a lot. I had high hopes for this because it's absolutely gorgeous and it's so heavy, as I said. Um, however, 10 to 15 pounds seems to be the going rate, which is disappointing. Um, I maybe try 20, see how we go. I think I've took some pretty nice photos. So yeah, disappointing. I think I paid three pounds for that one because I just absolutely loved it. I think it's gorgeous. We'll just have to see how it does. I'll update you on that. But while I was researching that maker to try to find my vase in the solds, it's always useful to look at the solds and see, you know, what sells for a lot of money from that maker. So there's some absolutely beautiful Art Deco style vases that have sold for 20, 40, 50, upwards, couple of hundred pounds for various things. So this will be scrolling down here. So it'll give you maybe an idea if you spotted something like that and you, what I would think is, oh my God, I do not want to pack that ever. However, for over a hundred pound, I would probably give it a go. <laughs> this lovely, lovely vase, it has four little feet and I paid £1.50 from a charity shop for it this week. And I picked it up just because I saw it had Czechoslovakia on the inner rim and it had a registered number on one of the little feet. And that number dates it to 1930. When I have image searched it, it is, let me see if I can say this correctly, Libochovich, L-I-B-O-C-H-O-V-I-C-E. Unfortunately, I mean, I thought it was absolutely gorgeous. Someone's got it listed for six pound, which is sad. I think it's beautiful. So I was a little bit disappointed with that. I'm gonna maybe pop it on for 10 and hope somebody will be interested in it. Um, I just thought it was lovely. I mean, that's what, 90 years old now? And somebody's selling it for six pound. It makes me upset, but hey, we're learning. I picked up a Satsuma type vase. Uh, really common, you see them all the time. I have on and off success with them. This one on the bottom says the Great Wall, made in China. It's in really nice condition. I've taken some nice photos. I'm gonna maybe just pop it on for 15 pound and see how it does. I would be happy for a tenner, paid a pound for it. So I, I just can't resist them. I don't know why, I just think they're absolutely lovely. Picked up a ceiling glass light it has lovely floral design on three sides do you have a side of a circle probably not really cute wavy design along the bottom uh they seem to be listed for around 20 to 35 pounds someone has one for 22 pound on its own 34 pound for a pair unfortunately i don't have a pair i'm going to just pop it on for 20 pounds see if that gets any interest i think it's absolutely it's a really really lovely piece Again, I'm not looking forward to packing it. A pair of mini onyx little either vases or for tiny little taper candles. I think they're probably just vases just for a stem or two of little flowers. I tend to pick up like onyx and alabaster stuff because it can be hit and miss. Some of them are worth decent money. Some of them are worth not very much. These aren't worth a lot. I'll probably be lucky to get £10 for the pair but I paid a pound for both of them and they'll be really, really easy to pack up and super light. 
I don't know if you ever watched this episode. I think it was the Antiques Road Trip. And he found this gorgeous Georgian glass. And he paid, I think, 50 pence for it. And at the auction, it sold for a few thousand pound, I feel like. And it's something I would love to learn. Um, I know Antiques Arena on YouTube does a video about identifying Georgian glass and I need to sit down and watch that because it's something I would really like to get into. I do like to look at the glassware. I noticed this glass, it was on its own, but I noticed it had a maker on the bottom. I couldn't make out what it said, but I thought, you know what, for 50 pence, it was when you ping it, it was the crystal. I thought, yeah, let's give it a try, get it home and see what it is. As it turned out, it says Webb Corbett made in England. This particular mark is acid, acid etched. That's hard to say, acid etched. And when you look up the makers, the sort of the makers marks through the times, this one dates it to between 1930 and 1947. I think it's a champagne glass. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm really, really clueless on my glasses. Um, there has been sets that have sold for around 60 pound if I had six of them. For a single one, 15 to 20 pounds, I think would be maybe slightly optimistic, but possibly achievable. So I'm going to list it at 20 and I can always lower the price. I spotted this little milk jug because the design is just gorgeous. So unusual. It's like very art deco. It's like hexagonal in shape. I just thought it was really unusual. I paid Oh, two pounds, I think, for it. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of chipping to like the paintwork on one side, and it does have, when I've got it home, a few little like hairline cracks, which is unfortunate. Um, it's Bursley wear. Um, this design is by Char. I'm just reading my notes down here. <laughs> is by Charlotte Reed. Um, it's sort of Art Deco early Bursley wear. From what I can find out, it's pattern 324. There's not a lot for sale. So normally if it had a load of hairline cracks and it was a little bit chipped, I don't think I would bother selling it. However, because it's quite an unusual design, it's sort of like art deco, abstract, colorful fruits. And I just think the royal blue is absolutely lovely. I can't find one for sale. So I thought someone might want to add that to their collection if it's a little bit unusual. It's early Bursley wear. It's by that, you know, particular designer, Charlotte Reed. Let's give it a go. So I might just put it up for £20 and see if I get any interest. And finally, for my pickups, I picked up this lovely walnut bowl. Um, on the back, it has a sticker. It's made in Kashmir in India. And there is the maker's name. Um, I'll butcher it, so I'll just show you <laughs> the picture there. I can't find anything about her particularly. Um, it's obviously just sort of a made in India kind of thing from um, from a shop in India, but it's absolutely lovely. Um, I think walnut is pretty desirable, I think, from what I can see. I'm going to maybe aim for around 30 or 35 pounds. There isn't a lot like that exactly, so I think we'll just aim high. Why not? Now, this past few weeks, I discovered the Gavel and the Gavel podcast. I don't know if you guys have listened to it before, but I love to listen to a podcast when I'm at work. I listen to it when I'm in the car. I listen to podcasts. I hate silence, so I'm constantly listening to podcasts. And I just found this on Instagram. Someone I was following shared that they were at this um, these these guys auction house and that they have a podcast and I thought wow okay I'm looking that up so I have I'm now on episode 30 I think I've binged them all this week um the gavel and the gavel so it's basically these these two guys they own two auction houses I think Oxford and Devon I should know because I've listened to that the their intro of their podcast 35 times in the past two weeks but they're so so funny it's great it's so interesting they have fantastic guests like the, the um, auctioneers and the experts from like the celebrity road trip and um, bargain hunt and they just sort of go through amazing things that have sold and I've just picked up so many little nuggets of information absolutely amazing so from that there's been a couple of things this week that I have done and that I found really interesting that I thought I would share 
They had a fantastic guest on called Michael Baggett. He's sort of the bigger gentleman. He is a antique silver expert. He has been on the past, I think, on the road trip and antiques roadshow, etc, etc. When you Google him, you'll see a pop up. He has um, a book, which is the illustrated guide to your call mark. So if you were interested in silver, it has all the marks from makers from York. He also has a YouTube channel, Michael Baggett and he talks about cleaning silver, silver marks, all sorts of really, really useful information. So that could be worth a look if you just wanna have a little dive into antique silver. And also when he was on the podcast, he said, if you're on YouTube and you're interested in antiques, the story of antique furniture is an absolute staple that everyone should watch and listen to. Now, I think it was put out as like a VHS as a video in I think the 80s by the looks of it um and so it was like four or five hour long um episodes about antique furniture and it just takes you through from very very early until sort of the current period which was probably around the 80s so that's going to be worth a watch I'll pop a clip here it was the renaissance to have a, a most profound effect on everything that our craftsmen did and these are a fine example of the sort of influences that were brought to bear. These medallion heads, which you found on wall panelling at the time, and they were also introduced into furniture. Over here, a, a good example of that. This uh, chest dates from the time of Henry VIII. There is the medallion incorporated into it, pure Italian design influence, and that uh, form of decoration became known as Romain work. If you're interested in antique furniture or it might just give you an idea of what sort of styles were popular in those times that you could relate to maybe other things that you pick up i just thought if you kind of have an hour or two spare on a night or half an hour here and there and you want to sort of learn something new i thought that would be really interesting and that's what i'm going to do as well this next couple of weeks is have a look at that Another guest on the gavel and the gavel was the guy who I think he's like an editor or sort of the manager of the Antiques Trade Gazette and I didn't know anything about it. I really wanted to learn about antiques, you know, I see things all the time and I wouldn't put myself out there to spend, you know, more than £5 on something because I don't have the knowledge. So diving into antiques and really really giving myself a bit more knowledge on sort of higher value items is what I would really really like to do so I thought this would be a really useful resource um there's a deal on I think it's 12 pounds for 12 weeks they do like um a weekly newspaper you can get it just delivered I like a physical copy so I can read it in bed and then I can like share it out and lend it to people um, but you can also just do the internet copy um, and if you sign up, you get like a daily email. So yeah, it's really interesting. They do all sorts. It shows you things that have sold at auction, what things have sold for, little bits of information. Absolutely lovely. So if anyone else wants to maybe expand their knowledge on antiques and if you like to have something to read in bed, this could be interesting. I think they're, uh, they're £5.99 normally. Um, so it's not too bad per week just for a little bit of knowledge. So I thought I would just share that in case anyone else had never heard of the Antiques Trade Gazette like I hadn't. And also you can find the interview with the guy who makes this on the Gavel and the Gavel podcast. So as I said in the last video, I really want to start like getting a little bit interaction in the comments. So if you want to leave me comments at the end of the video, I'll maybe give like a topic that we can discuss and then we'll talk about it in the next video. So I thought I would just go through the comments that were left on my last video, um, which was about where I bought the little um, stack of books. I paid a pound. So it was just sort of getting people's opinions on selling books, if anyone had any tips and what people thought. So let's read those comments out now. I'm gonna read off my phone, so that's why I'm looking down. Dawn Lovejoy says, hi, stumbled across your channel. So great to find another local U UK reseller. I'm based, based in Newcastle, hello. I never really go to Newcastle because the Metro is so expensive and the thought of driving, I live in Sunderland, the thought of driving to another town centre gives me the heebie-jeebies on a major level. But let me know if you've got any really cool charity shops that might be worth driving to avoid in the city centre, <laughs> ideally. But hello, nice to see you. Thanks for commenting on my video. 
Jawa Jawa Vintage, love this. I'm also trying to get into selling more books, not sure where to start. Um, for the military prints, could you put them into vintage frames and sell them in pairs? Uh, I have decent luck framing up nice pictures. Yes, I could, but I'm lazy. <laughs> I actually haven't got that listed yet, also because I'm lazy. So I'm just gonna um, list them as they are um, and see how they go. If I can make a little bit of money, as I say, I paid a pound for that big stack of books. So if I can get five, 10 pounds for it, I'll be pleased with that. Thank you for the suggestion anyway. It's something I can think about doing in the future. Um, it ju I just feel like it would give me like 25 extra listings and I'm trying to cut down. <laughs> probably going to get your name wrong hst43029 um did a really really good really really good comment selling books is a great niche to be in as it's probably the one area that the value can still be overlooked by sellers i agree and the majority of resellers whereas most other areas are well picked over about 75 percent of my sales on ebay are now books they are easy to source easy to store easy to pack and very rarely get returned there are generally three variations to sell books uh, number one selling low value books mainly fiction um they pretty much avoid these as it's so difficult to compete with the huge online booksellers like world of books who make pennies per book but sell millions every month number two selling bundles of low value books which is good for small scale resellers and uh, number three selling much higher value specialist books which are harder to find but they are out there over time, you learn what's worth checking and what's run-of-the-mill rubbish, which means you can scan the shelves much quicker. Uh, don't give up. Even now, I might check half a dozen books before finding one that's worth picking up. And a couple of handy tips. Old doesn't equal valuable. I agree with that because quite often at the charity shops, like you pick something up, not charity shops, I mean car boot sales. When you pick something up and they go, oh, that's vintage, that's worth a lot. And you're just thinking, it's not worth a lot like old doesn't equal valuable agree with that specialist and obscure normally does equal valuable and also using big booksellers like world of books and zip it to kind of give an instant value of books and useful to clear books that have little value thank you for that comment that is really really useful i do think there is kind of a few different ways to sell books and some of them definitely aren't for me so i really don't want the low value fiction and a lot of the big bundles just because i don't really have the space and um, that works for some resellers there's a guy i watch on youtube called rancid gonzo and he has um the ebay store bundles of books and he does buy like the sort of lower value, more popular fiction books he tends to buy, but he bundles them together or he sets it like variation listing so people can build their own bundles. And that seems to work for him and that's what he enjoys doing. However, I definitely think I'm more of the specialist, obscure, higher value, antiquarian sort of bookseller. That is what I would love to pick up and what I would really, really want to learn a bit more about. But thank you for your comment. That was really long and really, really helpful. If people want to read that, um, I've tried to put it here. But if you want to just read it in your own time, then yeah, maybe just have a check at my last video and start up a conversation. Silver Surfer 8552. Really enjoyed this. Looking into books myself. I think bundles are the way to go. So yeah, that's someone else who who kind of likes the, bu the bundle sort of offer. I mean, the, the books are definitely out there and you can pick them up super cheap in some charity shops. So if people don't mind and have a little bit of extra storage, don't mind build building up little bundles and selling them. Fab, yeah, that's great. Uh, Jayla B, this was an interesting video, even if it just shows how it's not always easy to make big money with little effort, a niche worth looking into. Good job you only paid one pound, 100%. <laughs> 100%. It's not as easy as I thought. I thought, yeah, you know, these books, some of them are quite unusual, they're quite niche, military books, they must be worth something. Not necessarily as I showed last week. So yeah, 100%, not that easy. Uh, Lomi32, you could bundle up the old hardbacks as deco books. Um, not worth keeping them forever to sell though, 100%. Um, I have done that before on Etsy where I've bundled up like the vintage sort of cloth bound books that are the same sort of colour. Um, to sell I don't tend to have a lot of success with that to be honest um, but yeah worth keeping in mind if you get some really really pretty spines on some books thank you for your comment right I think that is all I wanted to cover this week um, next week it's actually my birthday this Friday um, I'm recording this on Tuesday so it's my birthday on Friday and we are going to the Lake District we always go to the Lake District on my birthday week family tradition since forever and we're also going to Nesborough 
which we've never been to before so we're going to do two nights in Nairsborough in a caravan and then we're going to go to Keswick in the Lake District um, I am going to take my GoPro but obviously depending on the weather I don't want to get it wet and ruined I'll maybe in next week's video show you some footage of where we've been if we do get to some charity shops um, I will try and film those for you and put the footage in next week as well um, but we are going away on Monday so I am working this week until Saturday so I'll be at work on Saturday I've only got Sunday off and then we're going away on Monday so I might not get very much of a video or a video at all out on the next weekend um, but I've got a few days extra off before I go back to work so hopefully I can get you some of that little holiday away footage for the next video what i thought obviously if you want to comment on anything that i've said or if you've got any knowledge on anything that we've talked about today uh if you have listened to the gavel and the gavel podcast love it obsessed if you have any cool podcast recommendations put them below i love a podcast um my thought of this week and maybe something i'll touch on if i can do a quick video before i head away is are resellers making a mistake with our social media this also kind of links to whatnot because I feel like a lot of resellers social media and as well the way that they're selling on whatnot is targeted to other resellers and my Instagram is the same I kind of use it as a tool to talk to other resellers show what I've bought show how much it's selling for so how much show how much I have paid for things when really should I be focusing my social media towards buyers should I be using my Instagram to target the people who might want to buy my stuff and hopefully drive extra traffic to like my Etsy shop and I think the answer is yes I've started following some accounts who really target their social media they use TikTok now I'm not really a fan of TikTok because I, TikTok is actually quite scary it when you agree to the terms and conditions it gives the app and the makers of the app china the a lot of access to your phone pretty much anything it can get access to pretty much anything on your phone so tiktok isn't for me but i think instagram might just about do it so i i'm going to make another account for my instagram and i'm maybe going to use it just to sell um i think i'll niche it down to old books what i really want to do is start targeting the people who might want to buy old books just as an experiment and see how it goes so i'm going to start following other sort of book accounts start interacting in the comments start following people who interact with other booksellers or who are really into books antique books antique bibles etc and i'm going to start I've never done it before and I'm gonna you can get templates now for reels I'm gonna start showcasing the old books and uh, that I'm selling and hopefully try to build up an audience of just normal people who buy I think social media is such a big tool now that a lot of us don't really want to dive into or haven't really maybe thought about diving into I mean to be honest it's not really something I thought about as I say, I've been starting to follow other accounts who use their social media to target buyers and showing the things that they've got for sale and showing them off as sort of maybe like a shopping channel kind of vibe, I feel like. But the amount of views you can get on things on social media is unbelievable. And instead of just showing, oh, I paid a pound for this, this is what I've learned about it, this is what I'm going to sell it for, that's not really targeted at targeted at the people who are going to buy it. If you get, do you get what I mean? I feel like I'm rambling. What do you think? Do you feel like a lot of people target their social media and they're selling at other resellers? And should we be starting to think more about potential buyers? And can we use social media in a different way to achieve that? I hope that makes sense let me know what you think in the comments and we'll talk about it a bit more next time and hopefully it won't be as rambly and hopefully it makes sense <laughs> okay well down below i'm actually going to um link the youtube videos for um michael baggett the silver dealer and i'll link the video for the antique furniture 
on YouTube and I'll see if I can link Spotify for Gavel and the Gavel podcast. Really, really recommend that if you love podcasts. Honestly, I've learned so much in the past few weeks just from that and it's got me really inspired to get into more sort of higher end antiques and learn a little bit more. As always, the links to my Etsy shop will be down below. It includes a discount code. So if you like anything that you've seen today or you want to just have a browse of the things that I have for sale, um, when you click on that link, it'll automatically apply a discount for you if you wanted to buy anything. Um, maybe see you next week, if not the week after. Um, pop some things in the comments. We'll talk about it next week. Okay, over and out. Bye.